your scrapbook. The country club. Yeah. Alexandra's big time showdown with Roger. So I'm gonna miss that. Yeah, but you're gonna be there in spirit. Good luck. Thanks. You all right? Hi, Fletcher. Hi, Lily. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. How are you? I know, I know. You okay? How's the doctor say this? Well, he's got some cracked ribs. He's got these severe bruises and contusions. He's going to observe him for a few days, and then we'll see. Mm. What he really needs to do, though, is rest. Well, I can take a hand. <laughs> Look, you were really restless last night, so I'll make sure you sleep tonight. Okay, okay. I'll get going, but I'm going to take some really fine notes and give you all the gory details. Thanks. Uh -huh. You call me if you need anything. competition. discuss the terms of our divorce. All that dry legal stuff. We can do that later. Now, I have other plans for this part of the evening. Thank you, all of you, for coming tonight. I would like to propose a toast to the man who has meant so much to all of us, Roger Thorpe. This portion of Guiding Light is presented by Coast Deodorant Soap. That crisp, invigorating scent brings you back to life. Thank you. Did I miss anything? All of you know my husband. He may be the most famous man in Springfield. His accomplishments are stunning, and their effects far-reaching. But as well as you all know Roger... I doubt any of you know the man I know. The mystery man who swept me off my feet. Who wooed me and captured my heart. The man I married. 
despite the advice of a good many of you. I didn't care what you thought, because Roger loved me. He made me feel like a million. Alex, please. Then I realized I felt like a million because I was. I'm worth millions. That's what Roger saw when he looked at me. Millions. Now, we can't blame him for that. When you spend your whole life in pursuit of one thing, it tends to be what you notice in people. And Roger's been hungry since the first day he came to Springfield. Oh, but I don't, I don't have to tell you that. Henry can tell you marvelous stories about Rogers trying to crash the executive dining room at Spalding. And the rest of you have some less amusing stories about Rogers' appetites. I heard these stories before we were married and after we were married. But I ignored them. You didn't know. You were just jealous. You didn't see the man that I had seen. The man who loved me. We had it all. And he was such a wonderful businessman, too, you know. Oh, I know, I know. There was that, that tacky business a while back, but that was only immoral. Not illegal, or so I was convinced at the time. No charges were filed. How many times has that phrase been linked to your name? No charges were filed. Makes everything okay, doesn't it? Until now. Now Roger's in some very nasty legal trouble that he may not be able to squirm out of. And that's before we even get to the divorce. Oh, I forgot to tell you, didn't I? Roger and I are getting divorced now. And none too soon. You're insane if you think I'm sticking around for this. Ah, oh, come on, Rog. You're still smart, aren't you? Don't you want to hear everything I have to say? It was like I was on a grill at the barbecue. Oh, it must have been 90 degrees. At least. It's not so hot now. Really? Where did you get that? <laughs> I stole it from the pool bar. <laughs> what a wife you leave. Yeah, well... I've got it made, finally. That's great. Yeah, when I don't let myself get too paranoid or worried. Yeah, I finally think I can really enjoy myself. How about you? Yeah, I think I can enjoy myself, too. At least tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I need a cab right away. Cedars Hospital, rear entrance. I'll be waiting. 
occasions and they march and the people all dance behind them I think they're gonna march and we can dance in the park <laughs> you can dance to this you can dance to everything I even dance in the diner's kitchen what do you have a radio or something no the machine for washing dishes has good beat and some days it's the only thing you can do to stay awake and not go crazy from being bored to death <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she looks like. Well, I'm... Maybe I'll go tell that cop over there. Okay. We we stay here for now, okay? Okay. Hi there. What's your name? Oh, Timmy. I'm Eleni. Come here. Yeah. You like the music? You like the music? You want to dance with me? Huh? All right. I like the way you dance. Here, we turn. Can you turn? Wow! <laughs> That's so good that you don't need to get dizzy. Don't do too much. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Bravo! Hey, little buddy. We're going to find your mommy, okay? You just hang tight. Hang tight. I like this. Me and Timmy, we hang tight. Yeah, All you right. get to dance. <laughs> it's pretty good, no? <laughs> He reminds me of Stavros' nephew, Nico. Nico never stands still. He's so curious. He, he's always got his fingers in everything. Uncle Stavros has a big family. Uh, not of his own. He was never married, but the people in the village think of him as the, their uncle. His house was always stuck full of children. Uh, if you open the door, suddenly you see kids running all over, all over the fields, behind you, around you, little babies crawling out. It's uh, like the story of the woman uh, who lived in the, the big shoe. Mother Goose. No, not the Goose Woman. Uh, the yeah, that's the name of the book. There are the fairy tales in it. The one with the, the boy who has the eggs and the, the golden eggs. And the beans, and the beans yeah. And all oh, in the pigs with the, the wolf. <laughs> yeah. I read that. I read that. That's my book from when I was a little girl, my American book. <laughs> Except it, it had no page on the front, so I didn't know what the name of it was. <laughs> it's so funny. We have the same name. Yeah. You gotta help me. Alexandra for a divorce today, so I guess she needs a little indulgence tonight. Oh, yes, please indulge me. There's a lot I need to say, and so little time before the legal proceedings begin. I'm afraid I'm going to be in court a very long time. You see, not only do we have the divorce, we have this matter of embezzlement. It seems my husband's personal attorney and confidant has been arrested for embezzling funds from the Spalding Foundation. Millions. And wouldn't you know, none of it can be found in his possession. So we're working very hard putting it all together. How he could possibly have gotten into Spalding, gain access to the money, and most importantly, who has it now? So, uh, as my schedule is going to be quite full for the foreseeable future, 
I decided to invite all of you here tonight to make my apologies. I'm sorry I ever brought this man into your midst. I know that except for my support, he would have been a pariah in this town, and for very good reasons. Ed, I'm sorry for reviving painful memories and bringing you any new problems at Cedars. To Holly, I apologize for taking advantage of our friendship and for giving sanctuary to this man who raped you. Ross, you saw it all so clearly. And I wouldn't listen to you. Sorry I was so stupid and careless with your happiness. And to my beloved Henry, I apologize for all pain and financial loss you have been forced to endure. I owe you a great deal, Henry. You and Alan Michael for finally opening my eyes. Ah, Fletch. If only we'd ended up on another island all those years ago, things would have been so different. There are others here to whom I make no apologies. Those of you who trusted and believed in Roger have only yourselves to blame. Stop it! I don't, I don't understand. Oh, come on, you saw what Alexander was doing to Roger. I figured that you'd enjoy that. I mean, that's what you came here for, isn't No. It? What, you want to pin a medal on his chest? No. Then what is it? I just... She was doing everything I always wanted to do. She has the teeth to back it up. I never had enough courage to stand up to him like that. I dreamed about it. For years, I dreamed about getting back at him, you know, getting that last shot. And I, when he showed up, I had it. I had a shot at him, and I didn't take it. Holly, I think you're smart enough to I didn't do it because I was smart. I, I don't know. But I, all those feelings, you know, just kept building up. And then I'm watching her attacking him with all that venom. It scares me. It hurt me. I don't want that kind of hate in my life. Oh, I, I want love. For Roger? <laughs> You're fired, Roger. Fired from the company, from the marriage, from this club, from the entire town, if I can manage it. I'm sure everyone would find the air a little sweeter without the stench of your presence. Goodbye, Rog. Oh, don't worry about it. 
Did you talk to that cop on there? He told me to find your son. Well, he told me to look here. Listen, thanks again for taking such good care of him. Uh, no, no problem. Come no. on, let's go. Hey, Timmy, do I get a big hug? Oh, what a nice boy. I'll give a kiss. No. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, bye Timmy. <laughs> oh, wait, Timmy. Here, you take your, your stick. You go to the house. You go to the music. Bye bye. bye. Oh, oh, he's so cute. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> If you'll just put your arm around me. Do for 20. I own a house for 12 for you. I'll do for 11. Fine. Anything else you want to pay me to do? You know, Dylan. Yeah? Okay, well, this is going to be kind of weird, but just play along, okay? It depends. Come on, no one's going to get hurt. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so uh, the little ones get you excited, huh? <laughs> I just like the way you are. Real down to earth. Down to earth? Is, is this good? Very. What does this down to earth mean? It means that you know what's important. You like simple things. You don't care so much about money or fancy things. I, I, I don't know if this is me. Is this the way you are? I guess. I mean, I, I like what I'm doing. I like working outside with my hands and working on things that I can see. Hard labor. Yeah. This is nice, but uh, believe me, when you get older, it's not so much fun anymore. I, trust me, I, I see it. Hard work makes hard on the body, and, and I see it all the time in my village. Young people look like grandparents. Are you worried I'm going to wear myself out? No, I, I worry that you don't do something else because you don't think you can. Or maybe because you don't have the right people around you telling you you can do whatever you want. Dylan, you can do it. You are you are strong and you are... You, know, you can do it. You can do anything you make a decision to do. Thanks. Something. What? Just do it. At these prices? Hey, Hart. Hey, Hart. She so much looks as though she's going to harm you. She's not going to have a single day's rest, I promise. No, you. Vanessa, you can't get involved in this. I'll handle it. You'll handle Alexandra? I'll have to, won't I? It's my life. They were my choices. But, sweetheart, you weren't anticipating this now, were you? No. What do you think she'll do next? I don't know. I think you're all right as long as she's concentrating on Roger. After that... Oh, fine. Be that way. Blake, I'm sorry. I just can't see it. <laughs> I mean it. A nice little cottage, probably in the south of France. Nice little garden. A garden? 
Yeah, with radishes and asparagus. <laughs> a nice little peasant husband. A peasant husband? You don't mean that. Mm. I give you three months, three days, and then you're bored. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> Ready? <laughs> you know, um, a little while ago, you told me that you loved your life. Well, most of it. So why don't you just change what you don't like? I mean, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You mean I can have a fax machine and a good man? Why not? You'll regret it. Go back inside. Enjoy your last meal here. Your membership's been revoked. <laughs> there are other clubs. Not in this town. You think I care where I eat? Oh, you better believe it. I'm taking it all back, Roger. There won't be any way in for you. No power base. No place to hobnob with the people you envy. People you're planning to use. No matter what else happens, this town will be closed to you. Daddy? Hey. Daddy, what's wrong? Nothing, dear. Everything is working out just fine. And you, you have been such a big help. What are you talking about? Oh, I forgot to tell you. It was Blake, your ever ambitious daughter, who discovered the embezzlement at the foundation. What on earth did you think you were doing? I have to... No, there is no place you have to go that's worth dying for. Oh, Chilla. What? Listen to me, EAAC. You're not going anywhere. You have to go to New York? No, 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 no. In a few days, you can move around. But until then, you are mine. Would you page the on-call? I've got to get a sedative into him. So what happened? Oh, your friend tried to burst out of here. Oh, no. He keeps talking about New York and, and, and some friend of his that he... Yeah, he's, um, he's worried about a friend. Well, I wish the friend would worry about him. He can't afford to move. He's going to be much worse off than he is now. How far did he get? Oh, he took about three steps, and then he fell down on this hard floor. I want to get the doctor to check his ribs, so I want to make sure he's going to stay still. I'll make sure that he does. I promise. Me. I promise. Thank you. Hey. You're a mess, you know that? Come back to bother me? What happened? I went to the country club. Oh. Alexandra came this close to tearing me apart in front of the whole town. Oh, man, she knows. I saw my whole life flash in front of my eyes, you know. I realized how lucky I was to be out of it, and as horrible as I felt for Roger, all I could think of was, please, God, let it be okay. Let me get through this night. Let my father never find out. You were right. And I guess I thought it might do us both some good to hear you say I told you so. What do you think you're doing? Getting dressed. Mallet, no, you can't get across the street, let alone to New York. Mallet! Baby, please. You heard I, what Lillian said. I have to talk to Francesca. You gotta call her for me. Why are you so mad at me? Forget it. Oh, I won't forget it. Come on, my pocket didn't see this. Daniel. What? What do you want me to say? I am fed up. I've had it. All I wanted tonight was to take you home and be alone with you. You dragged me down here for this ridiculousness. Thank you very much. Why did you do it? I would... Alexander invited me. To a divorce party? Well, I wasn't sure. You knew it had to do with Roger, right? Well, I thought it... 
I don't know what I thought. You thought it was about Roger then. You hoped it would be everything it turned out to be, and now you're not even happy with that. What the hell do you want? I... I promised you that he would not bother you anymore, and he hasn't. Well, maybe I was wrong to intervene. I don't know. I thought that you hated him. This man has fouled your life up, and you wanted him out of it. I do. So why are you changing the rules? I'm not. I want him out of my life. What else do you want? I want... I want him to pay for what he's done. I've always wanted that. What else? I, wa I want him to, 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 to help our daughter and not mislead her all the time. What else? What are you going on like this for? I told you what else. Why are you being so emotional? Me, Holly. What about me? Daddy, did I do something wrong? Honey, no, never. You'll have to excuse Alex. See, I'm divorcing her, and she's taking it pretty badly. I'm taking it badly. You don't this think everybody can see it? You're worse than a child. What, you think you're the key to my life? I'm taking it all back, Rod. You go ahead and take it. See, you're the, you're the one who needs all this stuff. This place, your position in society. You're the one who needed that audience back there for your sad vulgar, pathetic display because you've been rejected. That's what you think this is That's about. That's exactly what this is about. See, because you'll always be a spoiled little rich kid who just throws a fit anytime she doesn't get what she wants. Because you're nothing without the props your daddy gave you. You don't have the slightest idea what it means to achieve something on your own, to actually work for something that's yours. And that's why you'll never hurt me or Blake. What a lovely dream. Do you find Daddy's words comforting, dear? What is she talking they about? They are all you will have soon. Your day is coming. Don't you dare threaten my daughter. In fact, lady, I'd shut my mouth if I were you while you're still ahead. See, I'm not going anywhere. The Thought family's going to be running this town long after the Spaldings are history. Don't count on it, Roger. I think we've had enough for tonight, don't you? Alan Michael, your aunt and I... This isn't about you. Yes, it is, Roger. I'm a Spaulding. You did this to me, too. You tried to use me to hurt my own family and our company. Just because you thought you could get it by the dumb kid. I would never think that. You know what? I don't give a damn what you think. Your actions speak much louder. You too, huh? You must be very proud of yourself. More than you must. You ready, Alex? Yes. Let's eat. Hmm. I'm ravenous. This isn't over yet. You earned yourself a lawsuit tonight. You must be nuts making those accusations in front of a room full of people. Ooh, I'm scared to death. Oh, you better be. <laughs> See, you got no proof, you got no records, you got nothing to link me to any crime. I mean, nothing. I don't need proof. I've got the best leverage in the world. Figure it out. through that spectacle and you can ask me that? You actually enjoyed it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was justice. Roger deserved it. I feel dirty for having been there. You do? It was horrible. No matter what Roger has done. All of that vindictiveness. All of those people staring at Roger. I swear, at one point, I thought everybody was going to pick up rocks and start stoning him. And everyone just seemed so happy about it. Well, that's because Roger has hurt all those people. Yeah, well, you're right about that. I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not defending Roger, but I don't like how it was done.
Bridget. I knew you weren't scoring me that cretin. What cretin? How did you get in here? Never look a gift girl in the mouth. But you can't look at the rest of me. Oh, man. You are too much. <laughs> then you'd like it. Just cut it out, Bridget. Just get out of bed and put your clothes back on. Really? Already? Yeah. Really? Already? You know, you've been watching way too many movies. It, it, it doesn't happen like this. Don't you like the movies? Don't you like the love scenes? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you... Look, Bridget. You know, at your age, you can make real mistakes. I mean, big mistakes. I want you, Dylan. That is no mistake. No, just put your clothes back on. I'm going to call your Aunt Maureen. Thanks, Dr. Calvert-Thwaite. I'll, I'll call if there's any change. Are his ribs okay? Yes, and that shot the doctor gave him should take effect soon. He should be out like a light. Is it okay if I stay? He's gonna be asleep. I know, and I, I just need to rest. I won't disturb him, I promise. Okay. You call me if you need me. Well, thank you. Call her. That you were asleep. Call. Mal, they just gave you a heavy shot. You shouldn't be away. Please. Listen, I told you, Francesca called. She left a message. She's in New York. She's fine. I have to talk to her. Do you know what time it is in New York? We, what if we wake her father up? Call. Please. You know the number? 718. JL5 6297. Hello. This is Francesca's dress designer in Springfield, and I. Hey, Hannah. I have to get out of here. You gotta get me out of here. So what do, you, what do you want us to do about Roger? Just not say anything? Everybody says something about Roger continually. You start on Holly, maybe? I'm not talking about Holly. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the look on your face when another human being was publicly humiliated. Hi, Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi, hi. Uh, uh, do you go to the concert, too? Yeah, I went with Eleni. All right, so did you have a good time? Mm. I had a better time after. Oh, great. Yeah, she stopped by company for a milkshake, and she needed a lift, so, uh... Thanks. Yeah, thanks. No problem. Listen, again, the, the pool house, it looks, it looks wonderful. If you want any more work around here, we got plenty. Well, I'll tell you, I gotta finish a couple jobs first, but I'll be in touch. Okay, bye. Thanks. Thanks again, Don. Good night, everyone. Oh, I can't wait to crawl back into bed. Call my car, Robert. Didn't you hear me? Call my car. The Spalding limo's already left. Miss Spalding's orders. Well, then call for a taxi. What is your problem? Uh, I, 
I'm sorry. The club only calls taxis for its members. This portion of Guiding Light has been presented by Cascade with Sheeting Action. Gives you virtually spotless dishes every time. This has been Guiding Light. Contemporary Silver Jewelry by Jay Works. Be sure to be with us tomorrow for another full hour of Guiding Light.